Yes. All right. Now I, I'm just uh, I'm just I'm speaking. You know I, I you know I'm you can speak for this committee, right. but you can't speak for the whole right. Uh, just uh, Lieutenant Ballard, mm -hmm. sir. Can you go go. Are you cognizant of the commissioners play up? A role here. Have they been contacted? Have they okay? You put well, this let me ask outside of the plan question. that has been uh, submitted. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. So to appease the Brandon King. No, to the question was about the committee, committee. Can, uh, council, mm -hmm. everyone here. The administration has done its due diligence, not just on this truck, but on a number of other trucks mm -hmm. that we've got. Mm -hmm. So there have been. Outside inspectors that were going to look at the vehicles, and, and actually, it's taken this long because we actually had to <coughs> deny some other trucks that we were really taking a good look at. Mm -hmm. So, as far as the warranty, we'll have to check on that okay. because it is a used vehicle. So, right. you know what happens when you buy used yeah. vehicles, but they do have lending laws and stuff like that to look at. It. Now, as far as the uh, fiscal commission, yes, they are aware of this. Okay. And we did speak to him, so yes. Thank you. I, okay, well, this is the last comment on this. I want to correct my mayor. You, the living law only applies to that's right. first For, owner. Yes. Does it apply to use? No, sir. No, 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 it does. No, sir. No, my okay. nephew can tell you right now from the west side <laughs> car you bought last month that is not know. operating. All right. Well, I say you should no, get up on that, that mayor. Correct. Get yourself no. together. All right, well, well, thank you. Now, Lieutenant Bally's here. Yeah. Okay. Lieutenant, we have some questions on some capital related to and just some questions on the police department. I also need to state for the record, I didn't have but one or two meetings last year involving the police in the fire. So it's timely that we have one now. That's why I wanted either you or Cardelli here. Cardelli couldn't make it, so but you're here. And you've been on the force for quite a while. Uh, my question to you is, uh, say something about two new police vehicles at $70,776 and one new unmarked police vehicle at $32,000, which come to like, uh, I think, $102,000 with three new cars. Uh, why? Okay, if we, and then we're going to open it up to the public, but I have some concerns about this one. Okay. I am here at the behest of the Chief of Police, okay. and I was given limited information. All right. I will tell you that the Police Department right now, Uniform Division, is rolling with three sedans that are 2014 Fords and two SUVs that are 2014. The average miles on the cars is between 40 and 60,000 miles. Wait a minute, you say three sedans, and what was the other one? Three sedans and two SUVs. SUVs? SUVs, Ford Explorers. Okay. Go ahead. Those are the backbone of Uniform Patrol Division. Those cars have an average of 40 to 60,000 miles on them. They are operating basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. From zero to 50 and back down to zero with potholes, with screeching <laughs> turns. Uh, on average, one of those cars is out of service due to a maintenance issue, a flat tire, a broken rim, a headlight that's out. Our mechanic doesn't have the ability to even change headlights on those cars due to the way Ford has engineered them. So when a headlight is out in a police car, that police car is down. We have another police car, 3124, which is also 2014. However, that was the one involved in the fatal accident at Euclid Superior. That car, we probably won't get back for a while because it's sitting there waiting for a civil dispute. So who knows when that car will be come back in service. Today, 3122 finally came back in service, and that's been down for several months. So basically, you stand, we got three sedans and two SUVs Four explorers. 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. Now, it, it's prime and it's, it, it, it's a, a good idea hmm. to cycle cars on and off shift. When day shift is operating, they use X amount of cars. When night shift is operating, they use X amount of cars. So those cars get a break for 12 hours instead of heating the motors up, heating the, red, the, the, the radiators up, thermostats, all this stuff that eventually breaks down. You drive your car three hours a day for all of you running around. These cars are running hypothetically 24 hours a day, seven days a week in extreme conditions. And it's not like they're going from zero to 35 in 10 seconds like you should safely. The officers are starting at zero and they're getting to a fast enough speed to get to a call as soon as possible. So our citizens are being served in a timely manner. So 
Along with that, you have the idle time, when the officers are sitting on a special attention, when they're looking at something, when they're doing a traffic accident report, when they're doing a police report in front of the victim's house, the car sits on idle. That's not good for the car either. However, it, you can't have the officer sitting on the hood of the car doing a police report. They can drive back to the station, do the reports, and then you don't have your police coverage on the street. So in, in order to keep police presence out there, the officers try to get their police reports done in their police cars. Well, we all know what would happen if the officers are trying to type and drive. We would have a few other traffic accidents. All right, be, be, before I yield to uh, Robert Thomas, this is my concern. Uh, because we need good vehicles for you guys, your life is on the line and that kind of thing. But my concern is, and you said something to hit right home that I've been thinking about all week, and that's the conditions of our streets. Okay, and you guys are up and down Euclid. I hear you. I live on Euclid. And I hear you all the time flying up and down the street and he's chasing the bad guys, whatever the case may be. But my concern is if we get three new cars, nice if the conditions on our streets would just tear them up. Uh, I said three or four days ago, I've already changed three tires and I'm not running up and down the street. So here's where I'm at, and I think I need to be up, up front about it. This $102,000, I may be able to live with one car, mm -hmm. but here's where I'm at. Now, let's say this, okay? Uh, we need to get this trailer, I'm saying this to the administration and the citizen, this trailer to get this truck out here, not only to fix the holes on Euclid, but the side streets that are horrendous condition, and it's been that way for years. And I'm, I'm suggesting that you guys try to get, if you can get a grant to get some more cars, that would work. But from a priority, and this is my bias, so I can't speak for the other ones, we need to free, and the mayor said this a few days ago, that you, we have this, this uh, machine. And it ain't like putting coal pads in. When this machine does its job, it's, it'll last for a long time. But we don't have something to get this big heavy machine around to fix these holes. So we need to get a trailer. That's going to cost. We need to get whatever goes in the machine that fixes the holes. And that is a priority, not just on Euclid. And let's exclude down here at Lee Road where the sewer district is doing everything. But when I'm riding past the library, when I'm riding past Happy, when I'm riding, this is on Euclid alone, I kind of know where the potholes is. But if I'm coming from somewhere else at night, you don't see them. And, and, they're, and they're huge. And let's talk about the side streets. Let's talk about Hayden. So Melbourne, I can go on and on and on. And, and, and this is not a, 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 a catch of the on the administration. It's been, been, been that way too long. So we need to allocate money to repair our streets, not coal patch, which cars can go in and kick out, but to get this machine going, Get that service department, and this is a suggestion to the administration. That has got to be a top priority right now. So we, I'm glad we got this money. So if we free up, if we have to rent a vehicle to get this machine out, and we can serve it, we need to come up with a plan. And I, and I, I asked him to have his service director. He wanted to know why I wanted to have him there. Because we got a list of streets.